Hello, my name is Matthew Tullifson. I'm a urologic oncologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm here today to discuss uh, one of our really interesting findings that are going to be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The paper is entitled Prostate Cancer KI67 Expression, Perineural Invasion, and Gleason Score as Biopsy-Based Predictors of Prostate Cancer Mortality. We put these together these factors together to create the Mayo model of prostate cancer mortality after surgery. Prostate cancer is the most common solid tumor that's diagnosed in American men. Studies show that one in six American men are diagnosed with prostate cancer at some point in their life. Yet it's clear that many men diagnosed with prostate cancer ultimately die of other causes because the cancer can be so slow growing and indolent. However, there are some men uh, and some cancers that are much faster growing than that, and many men die of prostate cancer. In the United States, prostate cancer still is the second or third most common cause of death from cancer in men in America. With this, it's clear that not every man that's diagnosed with prostate cancer needs aggressive treatment. It's also clear that not every man diagnosed with prostate cancer doesn't need any treatment. So one of the real difficulties we have in managing prostate cancer is trying to identify the cancers that are really life-threatening and distinguishing those from the cancers that are more benign and more indolent and that men might die with rather than die from. This is a really critical question that we have in the management of prostate cancer. There are many treatment options for prostate cancer. It can be really just dizzying for some men who get diagnosed with this and are confronted with the possibilities, uh, the possibilities of radiation, uh, which can be done with external beam radiation therapy, proton therapy, uh, or seeds, which can be put in the prostate to emit the radiation in that manner. Also surgery. Surgery can be done um, traditionally through an open incision. It can be done robotically. Uh, there's other treatments such as cryotherapy, HIFU, and hormonal therapy that are all used in prostate cancer and it becomes really difficult for men to decide which treatment to go with. These questions become really important because they play a big role in the side effects that one can expect after treatment and especially with the emergence of active surveillance for patients with lower risk types of prostate cancer, um, the identification of which prostate cancers really are lower risk becomes a real critical question in trying to decide which type of treatment one should have. We, in this study, reviewed our experience uh, with radical prostatectomy in more than 450 men, and we basically went back and looked at all of the features that, w that have been shown to be associated with outcomes from prostate cancer and re-looked at everything. So we took a a series of men that underwent radical prostatectomy from uh, 1992 to 1995 and we looked at their biopsies, we looked at their PSA values, we looked at all of the other factors that are known to contribute to um, aggressive types of prostate cancer and came together with a, with a model that we termed the Mayo model uh, for prediction of, of prostate cancer aggressiveness. Um, this model is really notable that it, it it, it takes features that are seen on the biopsy and, and incorporates them into that risk prediction. Many of the features that are used in existing models come from tools that are used to diagnose prostate cancer rather than tools that are used to stratify risk from it. For example, PSA is one of the most common reasons that men get diagnosed with prostate cancer. And it's clear that very high PSA levels are bad. Uh, or indicate more aggressive cancers. It's not clear, however, that somebody with a PSA of 4 or a PSA of 8 have really much of a different prognosis. Also a feature that's commonly used in most predictive uh, algorithms is clinical stage. So when a doctor feels the prostate, if they can feel the prostate tumor, it's considered to be a stage 2 tumor. If they can feel it outside the prostate, then it becomes a stage 3 tumor. But that can be very difficult, and at times, just feeling the prostate uh, doesn't give one a clear answer as to 
uh, how aggressive it is. And so we looked back and came up with the criteria that, that we found were most predictive of, of outcomes. And in this, in this analysis, we found that um, the Gleason score of the cancer um, was predictive. So the Gleason score is when a pathologist diagnoses a cancer, they can look under the microscope and try to gauge how aggressive it appears. Another factor that was important was perineural invasion. So perineural invasion represents the cancer invading into some of the nerves that travel through the prostate. And we found that if the cancer does invade into those nerves, that men in general have a more aggressive type of prostate cancer. Probably the most intriguing and interesting finding that we found in this study was that the proliferation index was an important factor, in fact one of the most important factors that predicted the aggressiveness of the prostate cancer. Proliferation index is an assessment of how quickly the cells are growing. When cells grow they express a protein um, and that protein can be detected using uh, common histopathologic techniques. The fascinating part with this is that KS67, uh, which is the marker that's used to assess for proliferation, is not a new marker. It's been around since the 80s. However, it's never been used in prostate cancer before, and we found that it was the most predictive of all of the tools that, that we commonly use in prostate cancer uh, risk stratification. So the central findings of our study that are coming out in the Mayo Clinic proceedings is that the biopsy Gleason score, the presence of perineural invasion, and the amount of proliferation as assessed by this KI67 index were the strongest predictors of prostate cancer mortality after surgery. And we think that these findings can really be used to try to identify the patients that need aggressive treatments and maybe identify the patients that can just be watched with their cancer and maybe don't need to have the aggressive treatment that uh, surgery or radiation uh, have. Hopefully we can avoid some of the complications and the side effects of treatment in some men that do not need aggressive treatment for their slower growing, more indolent types of cancer. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.